a quick agenda. We're just going to introduce a bit ourselves, not talking too much about it. Then well, we'll explain you what the project was about. Finally, you will see um, how we did it, what was the problems on the way. And if time allows, I would like to show you the results of our work. Um, so I'm representing Prima Group, which was a company firstly devoted to uh, scheduling, then expanded to services. Since we don't really have much time, I won't spend time talking how brilliant we are. You can <laughs> figure it out once you ask your questions. Um, the project that we've done was done for nuclear facility in the south, southern France. And uh, what we needed to do, we needed to model closing of um, nuclear facility because every two years the nuclear facility needed to be closed for six months for maintenance. During this six months you have a certain schedule that needs to drive uh, movement of robots as it is a uh, highly radioactive zone called the red zone and uh, we need to check if the red zone is opera we need to check oper operability of this red zone so we needed to be sure that everything that's moving within it won't clash, won't get to one another, because you can simulate the movement by the schedule, which means that the paths might not be correct. Um, we also needed to search for clashes, such as uh, objects moving too close to one another, too close to the wall, etc. And uh, we needed to check if all the schedule that's done, because again, the schedule was driving the movement here, was done correctly. So that involved uh, sequence optimization and uh, visualization of changes as once you change the schedule, you would like to see within a blink that it's actually done. You would like your 3D models to follow. Um, click. Uh, to do that, we decided to use 4D methodology, which is a uh, connection of 3D modeling with the time. And time is here represented by the schedule. So if something is happening in the schedule, let's say you have an activity move left, your models will actually move left. This is what we did. Um, to do that, we used the uh, Synchro software, which allows that, which means that you can import or create and uh, modify 3D objects. You can also import or create and modify schedules with uh, everything that's associated to it. So costs, um, information like activity codes, or information that uh, you have, for example, in IFC files, which are uh, object related information and uh, how we did that um, first we got the schedule from the company uh, from uh, people representing the uh, nuclear facility this schedule as uh, we are also work with, in Prima France with scheduling uh, we validated so we checked if it's done correctly um, it wasn't exactly the case but it was close enough um, based on this schedule, we actually designed how everything is supposed to move because movement was not uh, predefined, so all the paths that were designed were our paths. Uh, then we started working with 3D modeling, so we got all the models, checked them, validated them, drew the paths to be actually 3D polylines, uh, after which we connected everything together in Synchro. So we put the 3D objects, we put the schedule, we made it all run together. And uh, then, as a stage that is not going to happen in the future, we redesigned the path in Synchro. Uh, why, is going to be, why, is, why it's not going to be the case in the future? Because in the future, uh, and actually in the current version, <laughs> it was future back when we were working on it, uh, you don't really need to draw anything in Synchro, you can just import it. So you can import polylines and use them as paths for the object. Um, so once having that done, once having everything imported to Synchro, we simply needed to make it start moving and uh, check for clashes. Um, on the way, we had a few problems. First, the schedule that we got was not really a correct schedule. The inconsistencies in names caused a bit of trouble because you couldn't actually figure out what was moving and what was supposed to not move. Um, also, resource assign assignment was not exactly correct. Um, we also had to follow the links. And uh, finally, as I said, we did, uh, we did the preliminary path design based on the schedule, which uh, caused some troubles while validation. 
because people who validated the, the preliminary path didn't really understand it. Uh, we solved this practically by increasing communication. So meetings, 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 meetings. Um, and uh, applying the expertise on scheduling. And this is the result of the work, actually. So on the first phase, once after uh, examining the schedule thoroughly, we drew these. For each WBS, uh, we created a model, sort of, uh, a sketch of paths. You can see uh, the red lines are the paths the object is going to move along. And uh, I don't know if you can actually see, but uh, under each path you have, to each path you have associated the number, its activity number, and uh, resources which are assigned to it, which are going to move along this path during this certain activity. Uh, it's a part of methodology for future movement simulation. Further on, we got the 3D model validation, and that was a really rough ride because the models we got were coming from uh, an international organization. They had units in UK, they had units in Japan, they had units in France. And these units uh, caused actually unit problem. What I mean is that objects we got somewhere in inches, some we got in millimeters, some we got in uh, centimeters. If you put it all together, scale wasn't exactly right. So we had to examine that thoroughly and uh, to have that done, we used the AutoCAD, which was uh, one of the things we needed to. Uh, we also had some problems uh, based on conversion, because the software that's uh, preferred by the company we worked with was Katia, which, while you export your object, is causing uh, certain pollution in blocks. Uh, to solve this, we examined the objects very thoroughly in AutoCAD, as I said and develop methodology for processing 3D images. This methodology you can see in the slide behind me, which practically means uh, loading everything to AutoCAD, validation of scale, then uniformization of it. Finally, you verify the, how the elements, uh, what the elements consist of, um, then purge what is not needed in your elements, and load everything into a 3D scene. Because uh, if you export just 3D objects, you have sort of engineering objects. You don't have the construction scene. So all the objects needed to land in one place to have the right position from the start. Um, I hope that's understandable. If not, well, there is a question and answer session. Uh, finally, we needed to draw the paths, which went quite fast, but uh, was laborious because of uh, certain uh, manipulation difficulties and also uh, accuracy was not exactly sufficient in Synchro to do that. Um, that required a lot of work with AutoCAD again and refinement work, which was uh, to make sure that the objects will actually move with the specified precision. Why the precision was very important because uh, once you simulate movement of robots, you actually need to have, uh, you need to have them move it moving by second. The accuracy needs to be by second and by millimeter. If you program it wrong, your robot won't move any further because, well, it's just not supposed to do that. So it has to be extremely accurate, which was uh, the main laborious thing here. Uh, we also performed extensive path analysis on the paths we designed based on the scheduling expertise because, as I said, the path design was derived from the schedule. Um, this is what this what you see behind me is uh, the path design in synchro. So the white lines are the paths object we're moving along, and these tiny manipulators were showing how to make them more accurate. The final phase, phase was, uh, was movement simulation, clash detection, and preparation of animation. Uh, the main problem here was adding scheduled animation to prove that it's actually that the movement is actually schedule driven. Uh, as adding it caused some uh, resolution and size problems. But it has been solved by a simple movie post processing. This movie I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, just to give a quick conclusion, um, after working for two months on Synchro in this project, it actually proved validity of the tool. So 
it's proved to work well with these requirements, with uh, requirements, requirements of high accuracy and, uh, well, movement simulation. Um, we also managed to detect some classes driving from the schedule, actually based on Synchro. And uh, we detected potential problems and consistency coming from 3D models the, our partners were not, not, were not aware of. Uh, finally, thanks to the view enabled, you could see actually more realistic how the schedule is done. Because when you see 1,500 lines of, you know, just bars with activity A, activity B, activity C, you can imagine what it is, but imagining it is not easy. Once you actually see things moving, then you know what, what you're going to do. And everybody whom you're showing it to will know that as well. Whereas in uh, scheduling, there is always a problem of, imp of interpretation, of lose, lo losses in translation, which proves that uh, BIM software, maybe it's not the easiest to implement because, of course, you have to convince the schedulers. You have to convince the people uh, responsible for design. But it really, believe, I believe, is the future, and it's worked well in this case. Uh, to give you a little break from just talking, I will show you what we did. 